Hey everybody, welcome to my second video on order of operations. In this video I'm going to go over a more difficult example. So if you haven't seen my first video yet, I strongly suggest watching that one first. And I'm hoping that after this example uh, you'll have a good idea on how to solve any order of operations example. So let's get started right away. Notice how in this example we have a fraction with a numerator or the top and we also have the denominator or the bottom of the fraction and I strongly suggest for any type of examples like this that you work on the top and the bottom separately so right now we're just going to focus on the top or the numerator of this expression alright so what is our order of operations our first step is parentheses alright so let's look on the top for the innermost set of parentheses notice how we have two parentheses and we want to look for the innermost. All right, so the innermost parentheses I'm circling for you in red. So we want to simplify the inside of this parentheses. So now we need to move on to our second order of operations, which is our exponents. All right, so do we have any exponents inside of our parentheses? And we do. We have a two exponent. We have a three being squared. And 3 squared is the same thing as 3 times 3. So 3 squared can be rewritten as 9. 3 times 3 is equal to 9. So instead of writing 8 minus 3 squared, we know 3 squared is equal to 9, so we can put a 9 instead. And the rest of the expression is going to stay exactly the same. So I'm just going to copy everything else. And on the bottom, we have 5 minus 2 times 2. So now notice how we still have our parentheses. And our parentheses is our first order of operations. So we need to get rid of our parentheses first. All right. So inside of our parentheses, but we don't have any exponents. So we can skip our second order of operations. And we don't have any multiplication or division. So we can skip our third order of operations. So we can go on, move on to our last order of operation, which is adding and subtracting. So we can do 8 minus 9. 8 minus 9 is equal to negative 1. And the rest of our expression stays exactly the same. We have 3 plus negative 1 times 2, close the parentheses, plus 3. And before I continue, I'm just going to scroll down just to give myself a little bit more space. And on the bottom of the expression, we have 5 minus 2 times 2. And before I continue with the rest of the example, I want to paste the order of operations again on the right-hand side of the screen, just so you can see them always. Okay, so moving on with our example, uh, notice how we still have another set of parentheses and our parentheses is our first order of operations so we always need to get rid of our parentheses first and notice that there is no exponents inside of the parentheses so we can skip our second order of operations uh, but there is multiplication and division so we can't skip our third or third order of operations there is we have a negative one being multiplied by positive two so negative 1 multiplied by positive 2 is equal to negative 2. And the rest of our expression stays the same. We have 3 plus negative 2. Then we have plus 3 outside of the parentheses. And then in the denominator we have 5 minus 2 times 2. And once again, we still haven't completely gotten rid of the inside of the parentheses, so we need to do that first. And inside of parentheses, once again, we don't have any exponents, and now we don't have any multiplication or division, um, so we can move on to our last order of operations, with is, which is adding and subtracting. Um, we can add 3 plus negative 2. A 3 plus negative 2 is equal to a positive 1. And the rest of the expression stays exactly the same. So we have a positive 1. We have a plus 3. I'm going to scroll down a little bit just to give myself some more space. And then in the denominator, 
we have 5 minus 2 times 2. And once again, I'm going to paste our order of operations on the right-hand side of the screen. And remember what I said at the beginning of this video. Whenever you have a fraction, you want to deal with the top and the bottom separately. Um, so before I simplify the bottom of this fraction, I'm going to deal with the top and simplify the top. All right, so in the, in the top we have a 1 plus 3. 1 plus 3 is equal to 4. And the rest of the expression stays exactly the same. In the bottom or the denominator, we have 5 minus 2 times 2. All right, so now that our top is finished, now let's simplify the bottom of our fraction. And once again, we need to use our order of operations. Um, the bottom does not have any parentheses, so we can skip our first order of operations. Uh, the bottom does not have any exponents, so we can skip that step. Um, the bottom does have multiplication and division, so the first thing we need to do um, to simplify the bottom is to multiply 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is equal to 4, and the rest of the expression stays exactly the same. In the bottom we have 5 minus 4, and in the numerator we also have a 4. So now we still have not completely simplified the bottom of our fraction. We still have a 5 minus 4. 5 minus 4 is equal to 1. So we have a 1 in the bottom of the fraction, and we have a 4 in the top of the fraction. 4 over 1 is equal to 4. So the really large, complicated expression that we started with can be simplified to 4 using our order of operations. So I hope this gave you a better idea on how to use the order of operations. Um, I'm going to be making many more videos, so stay tuned. I really hope that you're enjoying these, and I will see you in my next one.